Without further ado, um, I'd just like to introduce you now to the headmaster, Mr. Garnier, who will say a few words um, and then hand you over to our head of sixth form, uh, James Bamforth. And then after that, we'll open up the forum to you all, um, hopefully for some questions um, to be posed to our um, current sixth form pupils, some new to the college this year, some who've been here a while, um, who've very kindly um, given up an hour of their evening to join us. So over to you, Thomas. Thank you very much, Jane, and a, a very warm welcome to you. I'm really good, glad that you um, have shown interest in, in the school. We're delighted to welcome you to this event. We hope it'll be really useful to you as you explore the option of uh, whether Pangborn might be the, the way ahead for you. Um, it's it said that the best two years of any school are the final two years, and I think you know, that is certainly true of the sixth form. I hope um, that maybe some of our, our students um, will, will confirm that. Um, the great thing about making a choice for the next two years is that you have made a positive choice and uh, you're in control of that process to a large degree. And the opportunity to build you know, relationships, good relationships, which is such a feature of, of life or should be such a feature of life in the sixth form, um, it is really important. The opportunity to pursue your interests uh, whether they're ac academic or, or, or of another other nature, co-curricular, um, are, are really important ones. And it's such an important stepping stone to the next stage. So I hope this evening will be really useful to you. I'm very grateful to, uh, to Megan and Ellie and Barney and uh, Maisie and Jackson and Ed who have given up time to, to be here to answer questions and to share some of their experience. And uh, without further ado, I'm going to hand over to uh, James Bamforth, who's our head of sixth form, who's going to give a little introduction before uh, we get into the question and answer part of it. Thank you. Ah, unmute. Thank you, Thomas. Um, hi, I'm James Bamford, Head of Sixth Form, and as you can see, I'm a, a computer whiz kid and genius at these things, and I'm now about to do my first trick for you, which is called sharing screen. Um, and if this has worked, oh, that's exciting, isn't it? Right. Uh, as I say, I'm, uh, I'm now fairly old, unlike most of the staff here at Pangborn. Uh, I've been here over 20 years as a housemaster and head of sixth form. Uh, I've had two children uh, already through Pangborn. Uh, my last is just about to leave doing A-levels at the moment. So I kind of know the school quite well. Uh, I don't want to talk for too long because I think the best bit of tonight should be you asking questions and us telling you what you want to hear. But just to see, if you'd sort of come up to me and said, come on, what's so good about your sick form at Pangborn? Uh, I sort of put a quick uh, slide or two together to sort of explain why I think you should look at Pangborn. Uh, I think over, overall, I would say, you know, schools are very good at marketing themselves. I've seen some very good shop windows out there. Uh, in my experience, Pangborn College does what it says it will do. You know, we walk the walk. Um, so I hope that will be your experience. It'd be lovely if we get you on site coming to have a taste today. Um, but, you know, that is what I would say to you first of all. Right, so what's special about the sick form? Uh, I've tried to group the ideas, sort of three ideas together. I think, first of all, academically, um, you're welcome to go and look at the last inspection report. You'll find the word excellent there. Uh, we've got an academic programme that we believe looks after the individual. Not everybody who comes to Pangborn College is an out and out genius. And we have a whole range of pupil abilities and pupil intelligences. And we think we look after those, those pupils really well with the offering we've got. We've got a great range of subjects. Uh, if I just dive down there. Uh, the last time I counted, there was about, I'm not a mathematician, there's about 28 different subjects there. There are a couple of BTECs in there, which is a slightly different way of learning. Uh, that some of you may be interested in. Um, but, you know, given what a small school we are, and a lot of our strengths are because people know each other well in a small school, we've got an amazing range there. Um, also, I suppose I should say, you know, the results that we're um, producing, I feel, for individuals are excellent. Uh, this may or may not work. If I go, oh, it didn't. Oh, I'm just going to quickly exit from there, and I'm going to take you on a little tour to uh, our website. That's our website, I hope you found it. And if on website you go into prospective families and look for sixth form and then scroll down, oh, it's working for me. Uh, various documents, 
this one, Guide to the Sixth Form Subjects 2021 to 2022. Brilliant for picking all the different subjects, but when you click on it, and if you scroll very fast through it, there's great stuff at the start, lots of all the different subjects, but if you actually want to see what our results are like, and bear in mind that 2020 was a, a different year and results were uh, calculated in a slightly different way, but you're welcome to come and look there. Now, they're not all A stars, as I say, because we have a whole range of students, but we're very proud with what they've achieved and uh, where they've gone on to. Oh, let's see if we can get, oh no, see if I can get back now to the presentation. Oh, we're there. Let's just present this one instead. Here we go. Uh, so, uh, if we've covered that, yeah, and also lastly, I should also say the relationship between teachers and students. As I say, a lot of my teaching colleagues are a generation younger than me now. I'm always amazed by just how good they are with their IT, but also the great apps that they, they get there. The number one thing um, that, you know, when new students arrive and they say, well, what was different between, you know, where you were before, or even our own students are growing up and coming into the sixth form, it's just this sense of collaboration that everybody seems to want the same thing um, out of the lessons. Uh, okay, uh, second thing uh, I'd suggest to you is I think we're very forward looking. It's not just about being at Pangbourne, it's about where's this going? And actually looking at our students and thinking about where are they gonna be when they're 25? Where are they gonna be with their 30? What are we actually preparing them for? Um, so obviously uh, UCAS uh, is certainly one um, th thing that we do. A lot of our students uh, will go on to university. Uh, I'm not quite sure I dare try that trick of getting out of the presentation again, but if you get to that same document and find the end of it, next to our uh, A-level results, underneath we've got the destinations, university destinations for the last four years or so, and I think you'll be able to see that, as I say, we think we get the best out of every individual. Um, there's tremendous um, careers uh, advice uh, here and lots of things going on. Sadly, it's COVID year, so our careers day conference uh, ended up being canceled, uh, but we also do quite a lot of sort of mock interviews and encouraging people to do work experience. And even online, we were able to keep going last summer. Um, I've, I've put down there the old Pangbornian network, but it's bigger than that. There's sort of the parents of those who've got children at the school, there's those who've left, there's even the parents of those who've left are still involved and usually, if you're interested in a particular line of work, there are people we can put you in touch with and they will give you an answer. Um, and there's a huge um, encouragement here to try and get you out work shadowing, trying different types of work so that that will actually then in help inform uh, your choices on university. Lastly on, on this, I'd say actually, we're interested in personal development. You know, it's not just trying to get A grades or whatever, they'll only get you to the door of the interview. Life is about life skills, life is about employability skills, and Pangborn uh, has got a great reputation for getting people working in teams. And also it's got a reputation, it's founded on the model of, of teaching you, preparing you to go out of the outside world and lead. My third slide, uh, I've linked together, uh, we've got a really good range of co-curricular activity. You know, obviously sports, a whole different range of sports, but also in music, also in art, also in drama, there's lots going on. And because we're a small school, you'll probably find that you're kind of involved in more than one area. You might have been kind of fairly two dimensional with your work and your sport or, or what you were doing in your previous school. You might find yourself dragged on stage in a chorus line. You'll certainly find yourself in a lot of divisional competitions. I'd also say the quality of the pastoral care. I mentioned our previous inspection go and look at it. The quality of our pastoral care is excellent. Uh, I suspect because we all know each other really quite well. There's something about all the things that we do do together that do lead to a sense of communal pride, but also individual sense of identity. Um, you know, we are quite a community. It's very easy. I hope the students will back me up on this, but you know, we feel that when students arrive, they quickly feel they are part of things and they are comfortable you know, Pangborn, that kind of school that you feel you're part of the family, uh, although fellowship is a word I've often used of just the quality of relationship I see, and very supportive. So there you go. That's the kind of, if you give me five minutes of time, which you just have done, that's what I'd say to you about what I think is very good about this school. Uh, I'll hand back to Jane, should I?
I'll stop sharing as well. Thank you, James. Um, so at this point, um, we'll open out the forum to, to questions. We did get some questions um, posed in advance, so we'll work our way through, through those. Uh, at this point, I'd just also like to say that um, Mrs. Uh, Samantha Greenwood is also here, who's our Deputy Head Academic. So if you have uh, um, questions of a, of a more academic nature, then please do feel free to, to, to pose those as well. Um, so I'll just start um, by, by reading some of the questions that came in, in advance while you perhaps think about some more. Um, so the first question um, was about our, our assessment. Um, so one or two of you who are, are with us tonight are registered, fully registered with us and about to take tests um, at your own schools. Um, so the, the test should take you no longer than an hour. Um, and it's an online reasoning test, verbal, nonverbal and mathematical reasoning. Um, and it's, it's an adaptive test as well. So um, it, it's, it, will, it will respond ac according to your previous answers. So if you get a question right, the next question may stretch you a little. If you get it wrong, then it may be, be, be the next question may be less difficult. Um, so it will, it will move at your, at your level. It's not a strict pass or fail. We do ask your current head teachers for references, and we will also um, have a, an informal chat with you um, by Zoom um, later on this month as well. So there's lots um, of elements that, that inform us um, about you. So don't stress about the tests. We know it's been a, a strange year, so um, just, just do your best. Um, and we'll, I'm sure we'll find out more about you in due course. Um, another question that um, has just uh, came up was, um, perhaps I might open this out to, to Maisie. Um, Maisie, how much independent work are you expected to do in the sixth form? Um, so you have, you have prep and then you have like extra reading and just other revision and stuff. So I would say I do about, like, it really depends to be honest on the topic and time, but I do like two preps a day, maybe. And then I do some extra reading like every day, just now and then around like the topics, which is why it's important that you choose like subjects that you are really passionate about, because otherwise it's going to be difficult. But um, what, if you're passionate about it, you'll, you'll be absolutely fine. Um, and then revision, you just make notes like every time you, you study a new topic, you make new notes and you read over them. And yeah, so that's what you think. Thank you, Maisie, thank you very much. Um, question has just come in on the, on the chat. Um, so perhaps I can, can ask this one um, to Megan. Um, so how do we integrate pupils who have not boarded and are living away for the first time? Um, so I actually joined in third form and I I was a day girl from third form to fifth form and I've just currently taken on boarding in level six um, and it has been a lot of fun already. Um, it's very welcoming, um, it's good for sociable, socialising um, with friends and everyone in the house, although there are bubbles um, because of this Covid situation. Um, and it's really good for workload for me especially because I was catching the bus home, um, which was very nice. Also, every evening you're assigned to 7 to 8.30 to do work and the whole house has to do it. So it's very, like, it's very efficient. You get your work done. There's no distractions, which is very useful, which I found very useful. Um, and obviously boarding, you get a bit more of a line in bed depending on how far away you live. Um, which is also helpful um, and yeah you just you you get to talk to more people because um, obviously going to lessons to and from throughout the day you don't get to see everyone as much um, but yeah I've really enjoyed boarding I think I'm glad I've made that decision um, and yeah it's, it's a lot of fun but yeah brilliant thank you Megan um, so another question um, 
which hopefully I might try and answer, um, is about our boarding um, and whether you can change, obviously with Megan just having spoken about changing to boarding. Um, we've got three different boarding options. Um, we, can, we have part boarding, which is four nights a week. So typically uh, Monday and Tuesday nights, um, home on Wednesday, and then boarding Thursday and Friday nights and going home Saturday after activities or, or sport. Um, typically, as long as there's a bed space, um, which there usually is, um, and after a conversation with your housemaster or mistress, um, it's usually possible to, to switch um, fairly easily. I think uh, typically we would ask for as much notice as possible, preferably a term, but um, we, can, we can usually um, accommodate um, short-term requests if, if need be. So it's fairly easy to change and to, to, to move up. And as, um, as you've been here for longer, um, uh, the older year groups um, tend to switch more into boarding for all the reasons that, that Megan just um, enumerated. Um, so um, perhaps that, that might just sort of link in a little bit, um, Ellie, if we could ask you um, how, how we actually manage to integrate new, new joiners, um, be they day or boarding. Um, yeah, so I was new to the college this year. Um, I was kind of nervous, but everyone was so friendly and welcoming that I just kind of fit like right in. Like I've made so many new friends already, so it's really good. Like they all made sure like I knew where I was going, like I didn't get lost or like I knew what lesson, where my lessons were. Um, I'd say just like be yourself um, and kind of get stuck in. So like I really enjoy sport. So I went to like the pre-season hockey training and made friends there before actually starting school. So yeah, I just say be yourself. That's good advice. <laughs> Thank you, Ellie. Um, so um, another question, perhaps for perhaps this one for, for Sam um, and or James. Um, can pupils do two A levels or B techs and an EPQ, or do we do you have to do three? Um, what's possible if um, parents and pupils are concerned about overloading? Um, I would say definitely pupils, we'd like them to start on, on three subjects. Um, some, some students start on four, um, particularly if they have new subjects in there, but we would like students to start on at least three and, and see how it goes realistically. Um, we generally find that those uh, students that come in concerned that they might only want to take two subjects, actually they start on three and they discover that because you have more time in lessons and more contact with teachers, they can carry on doing the three subjects and they change their mind and they're actually quite relieved that they didn't only do two subjects. So my advice would definitely be to start with, with three. And then if they develop problems, we would be in regular contact um, with pupils and also parents to discuss progress that was being made and things like that. And then we can adapt a program um, as we move through the sixth form would be my recommendation. James, anything you'd add to that? Yeah, I'd, I'd probably add a great believer of sort of begin with the end in mind. And if you actually look at why you're going to use qualifications or what you want to go on to, uh, most, not only universities, uh, apprenticeships, um, you know, it is the standard thing is three subjects is kind of what they'll be looking at. Uh, in my experience, to be honest, if you've satisfied the requirements for the sixth form and you've passed enough GCSEs, then you probably will manage three subjects most of the way through. Obviously, if things change, we will look after individuals. We have had pupils complete two A-levels. I don't think we've ever had a pupil only start to subject BTEC or A-level. Okay, thank you. Thank you both. Um, so following the academics, we'd love to look at the other side of things as well. So um, question for, for Jackson, um, what evening activities are available for boarders? Uh, so every single day, there's like an allotted slot for a different activity. So on Monday, uh, we are allowed to just stay in house and chill and like sometimes they'll bring in snacks and it's nice to like because you have your whole house bonding time after prep and then Tuesdays we're allowed to go outside onto the Astro play some like outdoor outdoor sports 
and Wednesday, fr fr Wednesdays are like boardroom time, Thursdays, uh, music open if you're into music. So like every every day there's different activities for you to like try out or like just hang out with uh, hang out with friends. Um, and then weekends, obviously, there's like trips, trips for the full boarders. And like there's lots of free time for full boarders to interact, which is very nice, actually. Yeah, it's very nice. Great. Thank you very much. Um, and um, on the sort of similar subject um, about sport, um, perhaps, um, Megan, you could help out with this one. Um, so is the pool um, and the gym, et cetera, available on an ad hoc basis for sixth form use in free time or off timetable? Um, so yeah, the gym is um, available. Well, there's a schedule. There's a uh, schedule has been created by Mr. Hawthorne um, and there's actually a new CNS coach, strength and conditioning coach, which has come in to help program um, for PD specific needs, say for hockey, you might want to increase power or different aspects to all sports, obviously. Um, but yeah, you can, there's a there's been a schedule that's been created. So for some of the evenings, it's been assigned to different year groups to make sure that's spread out fairly. Um, and obviously they've had to reduce the numbers because of the amount of people in there. Um, and they're very sharp on the sanitizing. So you wouldn't, don't need to worry about that at all. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's open for most people. You just need to work out when you're allowed to go. So I'm working at the moment with the CNS coach for um, to try and improve my hockey. Very big on that. Um, during one of my, I've just signed one of my frees. Um, and yeah, you can't, yeah, you can use it. You will, some, some sporting teams during the week will use it during their sporting period. But it's, yeah, you can use it as well on some evenings that you'll just have to look at the schedule for when you're available to do that. Great, okay. So that's sort of all our, the, the, um, the sort of the board, the evening time and the, the sports time. So perhaps Ed, um, you could sort of talk us through a little bit about what the timetable of the day is like for a, for a sixth former. Um, yeah, so it's slightly different now than it was um, last year with a, a few of the changes, but I'm going to talk about mainly what it was um, before a lot of the regulations came in. Um, so you normally would get, if you're a day boy, um, you normally get in around eight um, is sort of the desired time um, to get in. Or if you're a boarder, you, that's kind of when you should be ready. Uh, and you have muster at 8.25, which is including registration. And that's the entire house. So you have um, people from third form all the way up to up sixth. You get to see everyone in the mornings um, and it's quite nice to just talk to people that you don't you wouldn't normally see during the day um, and then you have your first lesson at 8 45 um, which uh, is followed by your second lesson and then a break time period at 10 30 which is about 25 minutes where you can go back to house um, especially in sixth form um, you can go back to house and you can uh, I don't know cook some toast or uh, just have a bit of time to yourself um, and then you have third lesson at uh, around 11, um, which uh, is followed by fourth lesson and then lunch. Uh, it was like a lunch period where you have a designated slot for your year group. Um, so as, uh, as upper sixth, it's normally around one-ish, 12, 41-ish. Um, and you, you'll get told uh, as within your timetable when you should go and um, line up. Uh, and uh, after lunch, you start fifth lesson at 1.20. Um, so even around lunch, you have a bit of time to go back to house, put your books in your room, um, and uh, after lunch, go back and get ready for the next set of two lessons. Um, and you finish with two more, um, and then all lessons normally finish around three. Um, and within that, because you are sixth form, you will have depending on how many A-levels you do, you will have some free periods throughout the day. Um, and depending on subjects and your blocks, uh, you will have time that you can go back to house and uh, they're aimed to help you manage your workload. So if you can't do some prep on in the evening that you're busy, um, you can kind of balance that out by doing some in your free periods uh, to help you in that way. Uh, and then after lessons, uh, you have to register again. So you go to your tutor, 
which in state form is a mix of people in a lot of different houses in your year group. Um, and then after tutor, you either have enrichment in the sport or sport then enrichment, depending on uh, winter or summer routines. Um, and so if you do sport first, you have about an hour and a half, two hours uh, of, of your chosen sport, which can vary throughout the week. So you do, I think it's about three, three option sports and then an activity slot or a slot where you can go get extra help. Um, and you would normally have an enrichment time where you can go see if you are struggling with a prep, you can go see a, a teacher one-on-one, -on -one, just kind of shoot them an email and they'll, they're more than likely to be happy to come and talk to you uh, and talk through a prep uh, or just a subject that you're struggling with, um, which is really helpful. And I found, especially in GCC and in A-level, that it is, they're always up for really helping you out. Uh, and then that should finish around 5.45, 5.30ish, and end of the day is at six. Uh, and then you can go home or go back to house and get changed for supper, things like that. Brilliant, sounds like a busy day. Thank you, <laughs> thank you, Ed. Um, so we've got a couple of, of questions that have come in on the chat. Um, so uh, maybe um, before we cover off the one about CCF, Perhaps Barney um, can help us um, just as an, as an introduction to this, um, because you're probably well aware that Pangborn um, is steeped in naval tradition. Um, it's manifested in its uniform, and um, many people probably think that we spend a lot of time um, parading. Um, Barney, can you shed a little bit of light on that? Um, yeah, so for marching, there's parade practice once a week. Uh, on a Thursday morning um, and then parades are roughly once a month although I haven't actually done one as a new low sick because of Covid which is unfortunate um, but there was a um, online online um, memorial service today um, which uh, showed like pictures of the upper sick um, and the band marching um, in the number one suit which is like it's, it's quite it's quite a nice thing to be like part of, and I feel like uh, part like feel like you're part of something bigger. Absolutely, and um, obviously um, you'll be aware of the, the, the Pangborn uh, students do wear uh, a naval uniform, but the sixth form is a little bit different, isn't it, Barney? Um, yeah. So in sixth form, you're given the option to wear a suit, um, which I I find really helpful because. Um, uh, it's one well, one thing's having a jacket, so you've got lots of pockets to keep like pens. It's good for organisation, which I found. Um, but yeah, you can, in sick form you can also wear the number twos, which is the traditional blue jumper and the blue shirt, um, and that's that's the uniform you wear for parade practice, as opposed to the number one suit, which is the uh, the full the full um, suit with the hat and everything. Okay, great. Um, so um, perhaps, Mr. Garnier, can you help um, provide some answers to the question about CCF? Ah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, certainly. I've just, written, paragraph there. <laughs> I've just <laughs> written a, a few words about the CCF. I mean, CCF is one of our activities. It's it, you know, the, the parading thing that Barney just talked about is uh, not quite unique, but there are about four schools in the UK who have that sort of ceremonial tradition. The CCF is uh, completely different. It's a it's an in school activity supported by the Ministry of Defence and runs in about 500 schools uh, in the UK. So um, we we have it as a compulsory element of our curriculum for those in in Form Four or Year Ten, um, and most continue until just before they take the GCSE exams. Uh, and then we get about I think I'm right in saying we've got about 15 members of the CCF who are, are sixth formers. It might be higher in some years, might be lower in other years, um, but they. Uh, have the opportunity to go on um, and develop their leadership skills. There's some formal training and they um, administer quite a lot of the training for other people. So um, it's a well-established scheme. We have three uh, sections, as I've said on the chat, uh, Army, Royal Marines and, and Navy. I was a former Royal Naval Officer, hence the final comment on that. And um, if, you're, if you've had previous experience, then you just you know, be worked in, um, even if you had experience in the Royal, Royal Air Force or Air Training Corps, you'd be worked into the structure so you could um, come in at the same sort of leadership position and move on. Um, if you've had no experience, then I think what happens is you, you, will, you will follow the basic recruit 
programme, but will be fast tracked and given opportunities to uh, work with your peers, um, you know, as as part of a leadership cadre. So um, it does it does seem to work very well. It's certainly a new activity you could try if you want to, and you've not done it before. Thank you. Um, there's, there are a couple of questions appearing about um, sports and teams. Um, James, maybe you might be able to help out there. So are there football, rugby, hockey teams in the sixth form? Um, and maybe you could talk through your answer about rowing, how it fits into the, to the school day, if that's OK. I'll, I, rowing, I've just typed. Let me do that. Um, we try and organise the day so there is usually about two hours of daylight. We don't always get it around dark November, December, January, but usually we have games or activities Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and that might be CCF. Sick form may elect to be getting on with work. Fortunately, a lot of them train as peer mentors. The time is well used. But the standard is most uh, students at Pangborn will do games four times a week. So a Tuesday and a Friday, uh, known as short afternoons. Uh, and there's about two hours between emerging from one lesson and going to see a tutor or going to an enrichment clinic or whatever they might be doing at five o'clock uh, at the moment. Obviously, times have changed under COVID. Uh, Wednesday afternoon is traditionally a long games afternoon. There are some fixtures then. And Saturday morning is also uh, a big games time where uh, in normal times, that's when our fixtures will take place. Uh, and the rowers tend to go to the river and uh, I have known them go out for two outings because they are terribly keen preparing for success. Uh, the question above was, do we run teams in the sixth form? Uh, yes, we really do encourage people to get involved. Uh, if you're new to a school like Pangborn, there's something about going out and getting part of a team and chucking a ball or hitting a ball to each other. You have to start using names. You get to know each other. So we run teams all the way down. Uh, the Mighty Girls 4th 11 hockey um, and uh, in sort of rugby as well. We're very keen to get people involved. We're not going to force people against their will. There are gym options and other options if sport really isn't your thing. But I hope we will seduce you to go and compete for Pangborn a few times. It's kind of the, you know, the Quidditch of Pangborn is getting you out there wearing Pangborn colleague colours and feeling that, you know, you're part of things. Great, thank you. Thank you, James. Hopefully that's, that answered the questions. Um, I don't know if anybody has any further questions, whether you would like to um, ask them verbally or whether you'd like to put them on the chat. Um, because if, if if we've answered most of the questions um, that we received in advance and that we've just had now, um, I will just sort of say a few, ah, future plans for developing the sixth form. Thomas or James? Fine, I'm, I'm happy to take that. Um, yes, yeah, so, so um, our, our sixth form, I guess there are two ways in which we could develop the sixth form. One is, one is looking at the curriculum and, uh, you know, that is on offer there, and the other is looking at the facilities that are available for um, the, the sixth form. On the former front, on the, on the curriculum side, as uh, James Bamford said, um, the, uh, we're, we're constantly reviewing the subjects we, we, we offer. Um, we have a wide range, new subjects uh, come, and, come and, and, and old subjects go. So politics was introduced this year. Um, and seems to have begun really well. That was in response to uh, interest from students. So we're, we're, we're constantly looking at that. Uh, and that's the, the work of the academic management team. And also um, the, the sixth form taking responsibility course and the provision around uh, careers and university guidance is another area which we're constantly seeking to improve and develop. So in, in recent years, the careers fair, which uh, James mentioned, unfortunately had to be canceled last year, but that's um, developed kind of broader wings uh, involves many more people coming coming into the school to uh, lead workshops uh, and spend time with individuals. Um, James has set up a, a very successful interview program, uh, sort of interview speed dating, um, which um, work, works very well. And you can see a noticeable improvement in the, um, the way, the confidence of, of the students and their ability to uh, respond to an unfamiliar person in an interview, interview situation. So we're constantly looking at that. <clears throat> and uh, you won't be surprised to find that um, many students found the lockdown period was actually quite helpful in helping them to develop independence in learning. And obviously we want to build on the lessons learned through the last uh, seven months. Um, so a, a much more blended approach um, and our use of technology generally has 
um, you know, come on in leaps and bounds, although we were very well positioned for the lockdown when it was put in place for the first time in March. Uh, on, the, on the physical development side, I mean, our long term aim would be to have a, a sixth form centre. Um, we had a go at this, I must admit, uh, a few years ago and created a, a hut or a room called Six, repurposed a building and called it Six, and no one uses it. Uh, and the simple reason is there's no, uh, no plumbing, no coffee machine, um, and we're aware of that. So what we were planning to do last summer and promised to do was to create a, a cafe for the sixth form, um, which would be used by boarders in the evening. And in fact, the boarders are using it. Um, it's a, it's a, a, a room that was used by staff. So the boarders are using that very successfully. And our intention is as soon as we can, um, uh, you know, before the end of this academic year, um, assuming that things move in the way they are, um, we'll, we'll have completed that project and that will be available to the sixth form from September. So that's a pretty firm promise. It's very high on our list of um, plans, along with a, a, a new AstroTurf, which we're, we're planning to complete. Again, that was supposed to be done last summer, but because of um, COVID couldn't. Um, and then uh, also being discussed, but, but at an early stage, our plans to, uh, I suppose, extend our library provision and create an area which is specifically for sixth form study um, and um, to, to, to build on the, on the provision for sixth forms. But I, I think it's really important to say that one of, whereas lots of schools have gone down the routes of sixth form centres and the focus has been trying to, you know, make the sixth form feel special, which I think is important, um, but separate them out from everywhere else. You know, at Pangborn, um, and we're noticing this particularly at the moment, um, because uh, we're not able to make it happen, um, the integration, the interaction between the older students and the younger ones is a really, really important part of our ethos, both in terms of helping the younger ones to settle in and grow and develop, you know, in, uh, the values which we're, we're trying to impart, but also for the sixth formers, I saw Red nod briefly then, uh, for the sixth formers to be, you know, um, sharing their experience and, and experiencing what leadership is all about. So for us, the sixth form is remaining in the houses and having a role there is actually very, very fundamental to what the school is about. And I think it's one of the things that the sixth form is most appreciate. Uh, perhaps, I don't know whether um, Ed, Maisie and um, Jackson, you're all in the upper six, whether you'd, you'd like to comment on that at this point. Um, yeah, I mean, so uh, in sixth form, you, you, are, you do feel like you are um, kind of a little bit separated from the school, but not in the way that you don't see everyone, in the way that you are given more priorities when you are working um, and you are given uh, different levels of responsibility as you go through lower sick towards upper sick. And in that, it does uh, kind of enable you to integrate yourself with other years. So in the lower sick, uh, last year you do, you sort of go around and you put all the other years in your house to bed which is, seems quite a simple concept, but it just does mean that you can kind of see them, talk to them. And if they do have any problems, you are there and you're someone to talk to. And I think it is a lot harder because of all the bubbles now and we can't really interact in the same way. You do feel like you're not kind of giving as much as you want to, to like kind of back to the school because you were given, you're giving so, so many opportunities. You do want your upper sixth and lower sixth years to enable you to give back. Um, and especially because I'm, chief of my house um it is a lot harder for me to really talk to everyone but um you, you do need to find a way and i think before it is it is a really nice way to get everyone feeling more comfortable with all the years so third form are happy to talk to upper sick and everyone's happy to talk to everyone which is a really nice concept i feel like at pangborn yeah thanks ed i think um just to add on that um you know we have as ed said he's he's what's called a chief um uh, we have a um Quite a lot of naval language so chief cadet captain mean, means a head of house essentially um and uh you know that there are there are um what is it eight of those um and, and it's possible for someone who's new in the sixth form as has been demonstrated this year to become chief so you know you, you shouldn't feel that because you're new that that route to being promoted to the highest positions is close to you at all um you know one of our chiefs this year is is someone who joined the school in um the lower sixth uh, in past years, we've even had a chief of college who, you know, head, head uh, boy he was, um, who arrived in the sixth form. Um, so, you know, we take that sort of development of leadership um, very seriously. And there is a sort of fairly formal structure for that, which everyone is involved in, uh, in terms of um, having a level of training and involvement, but the opportunity is there. Um, and, and that is an important feature 
of the sixth form. As, as Ed said, we, we're missing it at the moment um, because the bubbles make the interaction between the older and the younger students very difficult. While, while I've got the floor, there was a question about how many sixth form girls do rowing. And I, I happen to know, um, it, it varies from year to year, uh, to be honest. At the moment, we've got about four doing it um, in, in the sixth form. Um, last year, we had uh, enough for an eight and, uh, and then got hit by injury. So um, they, they dropped out. But at the beginning of the year, we had, I think, 10 involved. Um, so it's normally in that sort of range, um, four, four to 10. Again, um, you know, we've got, in fact, the same thing, what the, what the girl who's um, become chief uh, this year, head of house, she had never rowed before, um, has uh, started rowing, is making really good progress um, in that. So you can start from scratch in the sixth form. You don't have to have done it before. Um, and uh, we have a very, very strong coaching team. Um, Andy Green uh, is the coach of the girls, and uh, he's had you know, international experience and um, set up the Headington School Girls program, which is um, one of the two top programs in the, in the country. Um, Thomas, are you able to sh um, just answer the equestrian question as well? Um, uh, what, uh, what, what, what the equestrian activities are? Thank you. I, I'm I'm not an I'm not a rider because they did they did twist my arm to get onto a horse a couple of years ago and then made made a film about it which was rather terrifying. Um, but the, the we we have uh, I guess two levels again. We have an equestrian team. Uh, and there are a number of um, boys and girls, uh, many girls who are involved in riding. Um, they've all ridden before. Many of them have their own horses. I, I think the truth is that their mothers are very involved in, it seems to be, in driving horses around and, and being involved in that. But we do have uh, stables. Now, we're in a, a period of transition at the moment because in the summer, um, the, the people who were letting stable, stables to us um, decided to repurpose those buildings. So we've, we've moved to another stable as a temporary measure and we're discussing how uh, and where the stable is going to be going forward. But it is our, our intention to continue to uh, invest and support the riding. And the equestrian team has been very successful. So we've got teams at all levels of the school. Um, and there are also those who've never ridden before. Uh, and there is an activity during the week where you can go and, and learn at um, Cullinghood, which is just down the road, um, and uh, you know, le learn to ride. Um, I don't know if any of the six, um, Ellie, are you a rider? I can't remember. No, I'm not, uh, but my younger sister rides, so oh, she does it. Yeah, the cider, isn't it? Yeah. Um, sorry, if I could just uh, add to uh, what Megan's kindly put in there. Um, by the time of sort of you get into the sixth form, uh, if you are a full-time professional rider, it is one of our sort of flagship sports. Uh, and we do have one or two girls who seem to kind of do most of what they do is riding for their sport. It's not just a once a week thing. If you are a serious rider going over sort of, you know, over a metre jumps kind of thing, then obviously we will support you and hopefully you'll also feel good to be competing for Pangborn. Okay. F final word, sorry, final word on a question. If you want to know more about the riding, then Stacey Donaldson, our head of riding, would be only too pleased to talk to you. We can easily link you up with her. Great. Okay, it looks like um, questions might have, have dried up uh, now. So um, I just may just wrap up now a little just to, to explain next steps um, to you. Um, so um, just bear with me one second while I share, share my screen with you. Um, okay, so um, as I said right at the beginning, um, there will be uh, some assessments taking place this month. Um, some of you who are, are with us this evening um, uh, are sitting tests at, the, at your schools, and then um, you'll be having an informal interview um, towards the end of the month once you've, you've finished um, your, your assessment. Um, in order to, to take an assessment, you, you would need to be fully registered with the college first. Um, so, but we, the, the admissions team can, can talk you through how to do that. There is a, a registration form on the, on the college website uh, that you can complete online. Um, if your school is able to, to facilitate uh, invigilation, um, that would be hugely appreciated. But if that's not possible, then please talk to us because we can make some alternate um, arrangements. Um, and at the time when you are taking your test, at that point, we will 
seek references uh, from your, your current school. So if you commit to taking an assessment, then we would uh, need to, to have a chat with your school or um, ask them to send us a, a reference. Um, for those who are wanting to wait a little bit before they sit tests, we're proposing to have another assessment day on the 12th of February. Um, we're hopefully that we would hope that would be at Pangbourne, um, but it's obviously going to depend largely on um, the current uh, pandemic. Um, I mean, if it's possible to have you come in and spend the day with us, taking part in some lessons and just shadowing, that would be wonderful, but it may just not be possible, but we will obviously keep talking to you. Um, and we can arrange um, assessments um, at any time, really. So please, you know, do do talk to us if um, if you want to take it outside of those two dates. Um, any offers that we make will still be subject to GCSE grades um, in, in August. Um, some A levels require certain uh, grades, so please do check the booklet that uh, Mr. Bamforth guided you to on the website um, just to have a look at what the grade requirements are for your specific subjects. Um, but come the day, um, if it doesn't work out well for you, just don't panic. Um, pick up the phone, chat to Mr. Bamforth. I'm sure that um, a sixth form programme can be carved out for you. Um, we're in strange times, so don't worry, um, you know, if, if things haven't gone as well as you, you hoped. Um, if you're considering um, any form of application for a scholarship, um, be it in any of the co-curricular areas, ideally we'd like to know by the end of this month. Um, but again, talk to us if you, you, you're not sure. Um, academic scholarships, um, you don't need to apply for. If you perform outstandingly well in your entrance assessment, we will get in touch with you um, and ask you perhaps to come back and take further tests uh, and have a, a, a subject specific um, interview. So no need to apply for those. We, we will get in touch with you. But the co-curricular areas, then please let us know if there's anything that you're interested in. Um, so that, that really is, is all. Um, Mr. Bumfield has covered off where to find the sixth form subject booklet. Um, on the website at pangborn.com. If you go under prospective families, you will find it, you'll find it there. So um, that's really all um, as far as we're concerned, unless there's any last minute questions, um, you know, please, but please don't hesitate to give us a call, drop us a line at admissions at pangborn.com. Um, you know, we're very happy to, to, to chat with you. Um, it's not possible at the moment for you to visit us on site, but um, Mr. Garney is very happy to, to meet with individual families by Zoom. So again, please get in touch with me or um, other members of my team. We'll be really happy to put those meetings in place for you. So, um, you know, don't hesitate because it's very difficult for you to get a real feel. Um, so, you know, anybody that you need to, to talk to, we can, we can put that in place. So um, thank you all for joining us. Um, thank you to all the members of staff. Thank you very much to our lovely sixth form students as well for giving up their time. And um, please do get in touch with us. And let, let us help you along, along this road. Thank you for joining us.